So today we have an early prototype of the new 80 refresh from Mode Designs. This is an unlimited group buy through the end of the year with fulfillment slated to start sometime in March, but with the whole world experiencing shortages and shipping delays, I might take that date with a grain of salt. I do want to point out too, this is another board that's had a lot of sponsored content recently. This video is not sponsored in any way. I don't have any affiliate agreement with them at all, and this board is going back to Mode as soon as I wrap up with this video. So we looked at the Mode 65 recently, and I was really impressed with that board for its amount of custom options, its stock sound, and the crazy amount of flex in that half plate config. This build is a bit different as we don't have flex cuts in this PCB and we're using an aluminum plate, so we can kind of take flex off the menu. This is also hot swap, south facing, five pin, kale sockets. PCB is again designed by Gondolindrum, which I did not have to spend 10 minutes Googling to try to figure out how to pronounce this time. This is Mode's TKL layout for those of you that need to have a dedicated function row. This is as minimal as it gets with hard lines, rounded corners, minimal geometry, no rotary encoders, or even indicators of any sort. Do still have that really comfortable five 5.5 degree typing angle and 19 millimeter front height here as well. Big fan of that. Despite being hot swap, we do have layout options here. Not like the batshit amount we saw on the Icky 68, but you do have the choice to swap between regular or stepped caps, as well as using a standard 6.5 U bottom row or a Sangan 7 U bottom row layout, which I've gone with here today just for funsies. Potential downside here is that if you're running the standard caps lock key or the Sangan bottom row, you will have north facing switches on your caps lock and your entire bottom row. So you will have to plan accordingly to avoid it interference. Can confirm that Mode's own reflex linear switch, which are Duroc V2 linears, don't have any north facing interference for me with GMK. Some people found that confusing in the Icky 68 video, which I will link up here if you need some more information about interference. But just so we're clear, if you're running the step caps lock in the standard bottom row, the 6.5U bottom row, all your sockets are south facing. You have nothing to worry about for that bottom row. It only gets weird if you make it weird. Really nice PCB again, though. Great design, nice and thick. By the time it hits final, it will be compatible with QMK and via as well. I should point out there's no RGB here, no per key, no underglow, no indicators. We do have a daughter board this time around as well, USB-C, center mounted, nice deep recess in the case with plenty of room for aftermarket connectors. Included stabilizers are the Duroc V2s with the smoky gray housings. These need to be lubed and assembled, and I like that they come with these gloss black wires. We have two main mounting options here, the isolated top mount and the stack mount. Isolated top mount just means we have these little silicone sleeves that fit over the tabs on the plate, and that assembly is then screwed into the top chassis. It's not officially supported to install without these this time around. There's nothing to stop you from doing it, but I don't know why you would. The sound and feel are both improved by these. The board already uses an optional layer of poron in between the plate and the PCB, but the stack mount doubles down with a thicker poron sheet that fills out the lower portion of the case. This can alter the sound and the flex in certain configurations. We'll listen to both here in just a second, but because we're using a hot swap PCB with no flex cuts and that aluminum plate, it's not going to change up too much flex, I don't think. It's mostly going to come down to your sound preference. This board has the same clamp shell assembly where you hook the lower lip and then fold the board together, but it's different than the 65 and that we just have two large hex screws in the bottom. Did I finally get that right this time? This means we don't have that hidden screw assembly from the 65 and we don't get that cool magnetic back piece here. I liked that on the 65 because it added a visual element to the top and it helped break up even the pretty reserved forehead on that board. Here we have a much larger forehead and nothing to break it up. Visuals are purely subjective, but it's not my favorite look. This board weighs a good amount too, over four pounds and approximately 1.8 kilos, fully built, and there's no option for a brass lower here. This is all aluminum. I will say that, especially for being an early prototype, the colors and the finishes here are top tier. The tolerances and fit are tight. Everything looks and feels premium and it should. I've purposely avoided telling you the price until this point because I wanted you to have the same reaction I did. The 80 starts at 459 US. <laughs> Hey, yo, you good? You need some water? I get that the 65 is physically smaller, so less material cost, but this time around we have fewer cosmetic options, fewer material options for the lower case, and less complexity of design at a significantly higher price. Here we have color options and the same plate PCB options that we had on the 65, but for me, nothing terribly exciting from a visual standpoint. I was a big fan of the brass lower when I reviewed the 65, and I was afraid that board wouldn't sound as good in the all aluminum configuration. That's exactly what we have here. So we're gonna hear this thing out and see if we can make some sense of this.
Okay, so I actually really like the sound of this board. I like it a lot more running just in the isolated top mount versus that stack mount. It's got just enough low end resonance to give it some sonic character. There's a lot of variance depending where you're hitting like the escape key, the inner key, and the arrows all sound super different, but overall great sound and doesn't do anything negative. I wouldn't feel any need to mod this board at all. The stack mount for me just mutes it so much that it drowns out any character this board might have and surprisingly really did firm up the typing experience even using the full aluminum plate here. After using both plate and PCB configs, I would take the flexi bouncy config over this any day. The soldered version has flex cuts. I'd do that in a half plate. With this aluminum plate, it's dampened on bottom mount, but it still feels pretty firm to me. I do love the typing angle on these boards. I'm just having a hard time with the price point of this board. I am biased because I do have a tendency to like smaller keyboards versus the TKL layout, but I really felt like the 65 delivered a lot for its asking price at $349. That's what I expected this board to cost. When you consider the Frog TKLs like $289 before PCB or the new R2 of the NK86, from Novel Keys, which we'll look at next, is 289. 460 just feels like a nut tap. <laughs> Yes, what's here is well executed, but I'm not seeing complex geometry, any sort of standout feature or visual presentation, no brass weight options, no embellishments. Depending on how you see things, it could either be looked at as clean and minimal, or it could just be looked at as simple. It is also available in win keyless. That could be a selling point for some, and there is the much shorter than industry standard wait time. Best case scenario, you're looking at about four months of wait time here versus a year or more for other group buys. Like I said, this does run unlimited through the end of the year, so there's no need to rush into anything. Plenty of time to join. I guess that's my final call. The Mode 80 executes the fundamentals very well, but to me, it feels overpriced. If you're okay with the minimal look and you don't mind paying a premium for a reduced wait time, what you'll find here is a board that feels and sounds really good. It doesn't do a lot, but what it does, it does very well. All right, any questions, hit me in the comments and I will catch you all in the next one. <laughs>